quick rundown of the rig and the gear I'm using how, and how we get our tone on stage. Um, so let's just get right down to it. The first thing I'm doing is talking about the guitar. This is a 1954 Harmony Stratotone. It's the Newport edition, uh, as you can tell by the binding around the guitar. Uh, it's almost all original. The only thing that's not original is the tuning pegs, I believe. But also on the original Newports, you had a dual concentric knob. So you had one spot with a knob on top of each other. Um, I actually, I didn't like it that much. When I got this guitar, it already came uh, replaced with a separate volume and a separate tone knob. I just think it makes it more playable. Um, the two things that really give this guitar its unique tone is, number one is the De Armin Hershey Bar pickup. It's, it's an original, they sound amazing, even with a little bit of hum. Uh, but the other thing that really gives it its unique tone is that uh, it's, it was rare for guitars back then, but it was a neck through. So it was one piece of wood all the way from the neck down to the body. But also combine that with the neck is really thick like a baseball bat. So you get, you know, a really fat sounding low end pristine clean sound from what was considered a children's beginner guitar when it came out. So, you know, that's why I like to play it in GA20 because I play a lot of the low end. All right, let's go to the amps now. So the first amp that we're going to do is the one on the bottom. It is a Fender Pro Reverb from 1967. Uh, everything's original, I believe, including the speakers. Um, the thing that we like the most about this amp is that it opens up pretty quickly. So I never really have to turn it above two or three for it to get a nice full sound. Um, that means you can you can play it in a relatively small gig uh, without hurting people's ears, eardrums. Um, but because this is the bottom end, we do like to turn the bass all the way up, and the treble will usually be about a five or a six. Um, for this demo video, we're using the circuitry on the left, but actually, if you're playing a bigger venue, the vibrato channel on the right is a, at the same volume. It actually is a bit fatter and a bit louder, so we'll use that. Uh, live uh, at a bigger show, but for this demo, we're on the left one. The amp on top is a third generation uh, Fender Pro Junior, I believe from late 90s, early 2000s. What I really like about that amp is that it's a very simple circuitry. It's just a volume knob and a basic tone knob. Um, if you notice, there's a purple knob. Uh, Stubbs had our amp tech guy, Stan Day, install a line out from that amp. So if you actually wanted the exact tone, from that Fender Pro Junior, but you wanted to put it in a really big amp like a, you know, a Fender Twin or, or maybe even like a modern amp like a Fender DeVille and kind of use that as a, as a uh, power amp and speakers, you can get actually a really nice crunchy tone out of this uh, at very high volumes. But that, that knob doesn't have anything to do with the tone or the actual volume of the 10 inch speaker. Okay, cool. Well, let's move on to my guitar pedal board. Uh, as you can see, everything's powered by a Buda Labs Mondo. Um, it's, it's very good. It cleans everything up. I used to use the one spot in a daisy chain, and I can't rave about this replacement enough, as I'm sure a lot of you are also aware. It just makes everything cleaner, and it isolates a lot of the power, so we don't have a lot of noise issues uh, that might come from daisy chaining. Uh, if you can see the two vocal pedals on top, the JHS, and the TC Helicon. We'll get to those in a minute, but first we're gonna talk about uh, my guitar pedals. First up, we have just a standard Boss chromatic tuner. It's the third generation. Uh, the thing I like about this is two things. It's a lot more precise than the second one, but also it's a buffered single signal. Uh, so if you're on a big stage and you need long cables to get from the pedals to the amp, this is a good pedal to have because you don't lose any of the signal. Uh, I found that I was losing signal with an earlier tuning pedal and luckily that thing shattered so I had to get this one and I couldn't be happier. Uh, up next we have a first generation Seymour Duncan pickup booster. Uh, Stubbs had me get this a while ago and the thing that we really like about this is that you don't really have to have it on anything other than zero it, but it really fattens your tone up nice. <laughs> extra little kick for your solo. The other cool thing, we never really use this, but uh, if you see there are these three numbers here, you have one, zero, and two, and that's a single coil uh, boost, a neutral boost, and the two is actually, it makes it sound like you have uh, a humbucker, which can be helpful. <laughs> but you know, we don't really use that, we just like to keep it on neutral, we just like having a little bit of edge in our playing. Uh, up next is a Boss Equalizer. It's a GE7. 
Um, I have this modified with a Frommel kit to reduce some of the noise. As you can see, it doesn't really get that much noisier. I know EQ pedals can be notorious for noise, but uh, this one doesn't have it anymore. The reason why we have this is, is sometimes on uh, One Night Man and on Nagging On My Mind, I will have to take a solo. So what I'd like to do is I just like to roll the bass off a little bit. I might also boost a little bit uh, just to compensate because without the low end you lose a lot of volume. So instead of uh, your solo sounding like this, it's going to sound more like this. So as you can see, you get a little bit more of a high end glisten. It's not too much of a boost, uh, but you, you know, you find the tone is nice. Uh, up next we have a Black Cat. It's a trem pedal. I like this one a lot because uh, before I got this EQ pedal, I could actually use this as an EQ in and of itself. I play this on songs like Bo Diddley's Cracking Up and Slim Harpo's uh, Got Love If You Want It. Um, the thing about this kind of pedal is we've got four different knobs. I'm actually missing one. Oh well. You got your standard speed, you have your depth, and you have your tone. I like to keep that in the middle and then you have your boost knob. Uh, the thing about that though is that you can't really have the boost on zero because you will lose a little bit of volume. If you can tell, it kind of disappears in the mix. So we like to turn it up just a little bit. Now, the cool thing about this was that, yeah, it's a trem, but before I had this EQ pedal, I would actually cheat. I would turn the depth all the way down so we had no trem, but we would also crank the tone all the way up, which would give me a nice little treble boost there if I wanted it. But you know, I got my EQ pedal now, so I'm back to zero and I turn the depth back up and now I've got, I got my Slim Harpo. All right. Next up, we got our Topanga Reverb pedal. I like this one a lot. Subs told me to get it, and I do like it. So, you got your dwell, you got your tone, you got your mix, and you got your volume. I don't really do much. I keep everything at 12. I, I don't do as much reverb as Stubbs would normally do, so I just kind of keep it standard. I don't like too much, but I do like a little bit. Dry's cool, if it is, necessary for the song, but you know, a little reverb never helped. Um, next up, we have my AV box. It is a Big Shot AVY. Um, I like this a lot. I never really, especially for this band, I never really do any uh, amp switching with it. I just like to use it just so you know we have an AV switch to go out. Uh, the cool thing about this is you got little options for if things are noisy. That's no good, that's why I'll keep it up there. So that's pretty much it for the guitar pedals. Uh, let's talk about my vocal pedals now. Uh, first up, we've got a JHS Color Box. This is actually both a guitar pedal and a vocal pedal. Um, the great thing about this is that there you have other vocal distortion pedals that really go overboard with the gain. I don't like that as much. Uh, we don't like to sound like we're, we're in a drive through at a Burger King uh, in a broken speaker. We like just a little bit of grit on my vocals because we noticed that the clean signal from vocals, it didn't really match well with the tone of like a grittier uh, guitar tone. So we just like to just fatten it up a little bit. Um, if you can hear that coming out of my PA speaker, just a little bit of a preamp, just for a little bit of compression. Um, as you can see, the EQ is really just making sure I don't get too trebly in my voice. Um, there are other options, like there's this cool step knob that... Check, check, just take the mic out. <clears throat> so, the step mic actually controls the input, if you can hear it. Check, 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 check. You know, for easy purposes. We just leave that all the way up. There's also this high pass filter. I don't really use it that much. Um, it never really helped me that much. So we just kind of leave that off and down. Um, so that does it for the distortion pedal. Next up we've got a TC Helicon uh, mic mechanic. It's got all kinds of reverb and echo effects, but we're really just wanting a little bit of slap and a little bit of 
just a little bit. We don't want to oversaturate with that. You don't get feedback issues. There's also this option. Sometimes if you feel like the tone is just not cutting it, no matter what you do, you press that. It kind of fixes your tone a little bit, you know, tightens it up. Um, it also has this uh, auto pitch correct. I don't ever want to use that, so I just leave that down. And I usually keep that off, but other than that, we go. So that does it for all the pedals. Let's play. 